What we're going to talk about this time, I think, is just a little different way of flounder fishing as opposed to what people traditionally fish. I fish a little heavier than everybody fishes, more weight, bigger baits, that kind of thing. What I was going to talk about, I thought coming here we'd talk about was fishing on the artificial reefs or hard bottom areas, you know, inshore places, one mile and less, that kind of thing. But since we have some new people here, we'll run through it real quick on size of bait, type bait, nets. Anybody has a question, just raise your hand. We'll get to it. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. And if I kind of know, I'll make it up. And we'll just go from there. <laughs> There's basically, we're, 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 live, we're talking about live bait fishing. We're fishing with mullet, Manhattan, that type thing. And I'll just start with my bucket here. The, um, I personally think you only need one net in your boat. It, it'll get you through just about any kind, and it's... Um, an eight foot, half inch mesh net. I use a Super Pro uh, Bets net. It's, I think it's like $109. It's the best all round net I've ever messed with. Um, most of your baits that you catch with, you see a lot of flounder fishermen fish with 3 8 mesh nets. That, the mesh being the distance between the knots. Um, 3 8 mesh catches too small a bait. If your bait is, is gilling in the net, it's too small. And to do what we're trying to do anyway, the kind of fishing I'm trying to do. Uh, your bait will be overpowered by the lead. That's what we're going to talk about using the amount of lead we use like that. Plenty of flounder caught on small bait. I, don't, I won't say that, that they won't. Probably more flounder caught on small mullet than anything. I primarily fish with large manhattan. Uh, being, now that we've caught some bait, most people fish with mullet, I would say, this size or less. That's, they think they've got, they got 100 of those in their bait tank and they're all happy at all. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's been plenty of large flounder caught with these. But that's because everybody's fishing with these. I don't think it's the, the bait itself. You know, if, if 15 of us go and 14 are fishing with these, you've got a better chance of catching larger than I will with one big bait. But if everybody fishes with big bait, we'll do better off. Big bait being a Manhattan, pokies. Um, everybody know what I'm talking about when I say Manhattan? They, they call them pokies. Yankees call them bunker. Um, it's. Um, <coughs> Looks something like this. This is this is just a size representation. This is basically what size manhaden I'll fish. This size will be the smallest one I want to fish with. It will go up from there. Your king mackerel fishermen, the ones that you think are just a little bit too small to fish with, those are the ones you want to save and flounder fish with. I can fish them dead or alive. Um, I found that dead manhaden will outfish wore out manhaden in a bait tank. If you've been running the same manhaden, you know if you have a good throw and you get 300 baits or whatever you get. Put them in a cooler and keep them fresh. That way they stay oily. They they will outfish, in my opinion, a live wore out one. Old red nose. You know when you pick them up, they're not they're not oily anymore. A dead one. He comes out of that cooler. He's dripping with it. He's ready to go. I mean, we, we're just going to hook them a little bit different. Um, and going through that, we'll just um, now we caught our bait. On my boat, we're going to have a bait full of pokies. I'll I'll take the mullet because I know people that like to fish with mullet, and they are easier to catch smaller fish with the mullet. Um, the people tell you about the mullet, that they're going to scale your bait. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of people put that out there. Small flounders scale the bait. Big flounder, in my opinion, do not scale the bait. Whether they're mullet, spots, manhaden, no flounder scales a manhaden. What happens, you'll see when you come in, you bring your uh, bait in, your, your big manhaden, and it's going to be like this. It's going to be pulled down. And you're going you know, you to show your buddy, say, he, he, scaled, he scaled my bait. No, he didn't. You scaled the bait. He bit down on it, and you jerked it out of his mouth. The, when, when you get the bite, typically what's going to happen, in my mind what happens, when you get that heavy thump, thump, he's got the bait just like this. Boom, boom. He stuns the bait. Then you give him just a few minutes, seconds, not minutes, seconds. Then flip it around. Our hook's going to be in his nose. He swallows it down. All he's trying to do is to eat the bait. All you can do is take it away from him or let him swallow it. That's, that's the choices. The bite that you get, and the illustration I use, and we're jumping on bites all of a sudden here, we only got the first bite. The bite that you get that's that tap bite. It's that one, it's like a ping pong ball tapping. It's very light. It's a light bite. Took me a while to figure out what was going on there, and I, and I may have it figured out wrong, but in my mind, when you, when you get that light bite, that tap, you always seem to catch that fish. And it was like, you know, what, what's that all about? And in my mind, what that's all about, he hit, you drug it right in front of him. Now he sucked it straight down. He didn't, he didn't try to stun it, he didn't do anything. He sucked it straight down. And what you, what you feel, that tap, is his head hitting in the throat of that fish. And now that's a good thing. And then you just let, set that go, let it sit there a few seconds, give him time to gulp it down. They're very aggressive, they will gulp them down. 
and um, you set the hook, and you and you can't you can't miss. <coughs> Talk about the rods and reels and the rigs, the, the main rig, the main rod and reel I use, I, I prefer bait casting reels. Um, I prefer these slide type fish finder rigs as opposed to, we're going to start with the hook. This is a number six Mustad hook, 2X strong. It's 25 pound fluorocarbon, no longer than that. That's, 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 start with two feet, work your way down. If you're fishing in place in the intercoastal waterway, the water's very dirty. It gets to the point it's so dirty you can't see your bait, your bait tank, shorten them up. You can use six inches. It don't matter how short you cut them, when that fish wants it, he's gonna take it away from you anyway. It's just, you know. But if you're like offshore and the water's clear, you can ride up that high. I think a flounder can still see that. But let's, let's help them out. If the, if the water's by the color of that iced tea, let's shorten them up. Next on the next here, we've got just a regular old swivel. I think that's a number 12. It doesn't matter. Put the bead on there. Everybody tells you that protects the knot. That's not what it's there for. It's there to keep that slide. Excuse me, go right in. It's there to keep that swivel going up into the. What happens if you don't have that bead there? That swivel runs up into this connector, and that's a bad thing. It end up down here. You, it can swat all the way through and you let it end up here or to get hung and you don't have the fish finder capability where it wants to pull it off and still pull the weight. And that's, this is primarily the rig I use. I use six and a half foot rods. All of them are six and a half foot, various weights, just depending on what we're trying to do. And then uh, I use this style. A lot of people who don't prefer this style. Oh, let me get back to this. This is the other style of connector. The reason I don't use this style right here 90% of the people in the world don't know how they work. They, there's, you know how they work, but they got the, okay. So I give you a rod and say, okay, knucklehead, put this, put this, and he's sitting there working on it, working on it, we can't figure it out. On these connectors right here, they have a dimple on one side. They're hard to see. That is the side that you pinch, and it'll open up like that. You can pinch the other side with a pair of pliers, and it won't open up. They can, there's no opening on that side. But I've seen people fight this, not except I'm watching for a while, you know, I'll get around and get some paint to them in a minute that type thing. But you pinch this side right here, it won't open. There's nothing on that side. That's why I use this. Everybody can figure this out. Sam may have a little problem with it, but you know, most people get it right. <laughs> the, um, that's, the, that's, the how I, that's trial and error how I got to that. Now, that's, a, that's a big thing. Another reason I use that where I can take this lead off, you buy these $200 rods, you're going down the waterway in the ocean like that, and they're banging on it like this, that's a very bad thing. Because, you know, I fish in a bay boat, it rides like a bag of rocks when it gets rough. And uh, all this right here, you can't have that. It is, it is it is weaken them up, and then it's, then, you, then you got nothing left. And if, if I go to a spinning reel, which most people favor, most people can handle this a little bit better. Not most people. A lot of people can handle it a little bit better, like that. And we're just going to put the. We're gonna, of course, we're going to add the lead to it. You open the bell, drop it down, keep the line tight. Um, that kind of thing. <coughs> That is just a step. That right there, you can go fishing for a lot of things with this. You can redfish with this. You know, it's not very sporting with the, the treble hook. A lot of guys will tell you to put those kale hooks on. Jimmy Price will tell you to put them number 42 eagle claws on. That's fine if you want to do that, but that, that's not for me. The, uh, what happens on the kale hook, particularly with Manhattan, we, we're going to hook them through the nose so we can keep them alive, sideways, right through the nose. The kale hook will come back through and hook it again. You can fight the fish right up to the boat, but the only thing he's holding on to is that in his gullet, he's got these little spikes in his, in his gullet. He's clamped down on that head of that fish, but he hasn't got the hook, because the hook's in the manhaden. It's when it's swung all the way around into the manhaden's head. I don't have, I don't even have a tail hook with me. But what happens, he goes in like this, comes back around, and he's hooked in again. Now you got this hard manhaden head, or mullet head, on that kale hook, and the, and the flounder's got it in his throat. You can bring him up to the boat, but you can't pull him enough, and it just pulls away. And like that, and that's just, that's a bad thing. If you come back and you see the hooks up in this thing, that's when I went. Somebody put me on to the, the uh, I didn't invent the, the treble hook idea. Somebody else put me on to it, and it's just like you go from maybe 60, 70 percent of the hookups, you actually get them hooked up, to probably 90 or better on the treble hook. If he if he gets that treble hook, if he gets that head of that bait turned in his mouth, you're gonna you're gonna probably see the fish. You're probably gonna hook him. If you give him time to turn around. What most people are doing, they get that boom, boom bite. 
and that man that just tears them up. And they they swing at it, and the, when that boom boom bite is, is the one he's got by the tail, the hook's gonna be in his head, right through his nose, right through his nostrils, just like you kingfish with. The um, the mullet you do a little different. You take those to the bottom of the throat and out the top of their head, because they're 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 geared up a little, they're a little different. You'll get right through the under the throat, right out the top of their head. The um, Talk about the nets. Um, you're gonna. I, I should brought my floor mat with me. Um, a lot of guys go find fish with a net this size, and that's that's fine if you don't plan to catch any. And um, if you're fishing a place like Snow's Cut, which I fish a lot, the waterway, the inlet, places drifting in inlets, that type of thing, um, you're gonna have a hard time getting that flounder. It's gonna have one of these deals, particularly by yourself. You're pulling the bait. When you pull the bait up, you got the fish up to there, so you rock up. And then you bend down to get the fish, and the fish goes back down. So you're going to do this little thing for a while. If you use a larger net, which is a much better size net right here, you get a little bit more serious about it. Because you, you, know, you catch a flounder, you catch a flounder that weighs seven, eight pounds, which is a, real, a really good fish. I have a hard time getting him in there, just getting him in there. He's longer. Another thing they'll do, they're long, he's, he's longer than this is deep. Now he's got his head in there. And he can still propel himself. And I've seen him jump out of nets before. You see why guys got them little green nets? Them little round green nets? Usually got a rod and reel with a green grub on it. That's, that's kind of all works out through there. But that flounder will go down in there. And if he's two feet long, which a, you know, a seven, eight pounder is, he's still got, he's still got tail hanging up here. You don't, you don't want that. Don't want that at all. This net right here, if you get one to fill this up, if he's any bigger than this, you know, that's a good thing. And what I, what I do when I'm, when I'm fishing by myself, I'll just take the rod and I'll just stick this point like this and then we'll, we'll get him up there and then we'll stop that little game. We're, we're, I've, got him, I've got him up here and then when I bend down the dip, he'll go away from me but I'll slide that out and get it up under it. Never touch his tail. If you touch his tail, he goes crazy. He goes crazy on top of the water like he just, he just goes crazy. Just rattling across the water and that's when you lose him. Always net him head first. That's, that's a big thing. And use a big net, it's going to be much easier to do this stuff. It's just much easier. Everybody's got that I lost one at the boat story. If you, you know, if you fish any for flounder at all, I, you know, I had a 10 pounder at the boat, but we lost him. Well, he probably weighed five, he looked 10, but you for sure lost him. You know, it's just, uh, you know, so it's your story. And uh, uh, let's talk about where you fish. Fortunately, with flounder fishing, when you fish. If you're, if you're a mackerel fish, you fish when the wind blows. That's what's so nice about it. You can fish almost any kind of weather. You can fish in the rain, you can fish in the wind. If you can get bait, you can do all, you can do it any, you can find somewhere that the wind's not blowing. Um, behind a bank, a, you know, a bluff or something like that, you can usually can find your place to fish. But what you've got to fish is anything different. Most guys will fish shallow. I think that's wrong. Unless you're surf fishing, you have to. You've got to pull it back through. But the, uh, you, what you usually see surf fishing though, you see the guys on the surf that fish like Carolina Beach on the, on the, on the, the north end of Carolina Beach. They're on the surf throwing this as far as they can, and then the flounder fishermen are on the, in the boats throwing this as far as they can. Somebody's confused. Somebody's wrong. And so I think they're all wrong. I think we should be fishing in the boat. We should be fishing on the drop-offs. Anything different. A drop-off, whether it be on a canal, channel, behind uh, pilings, docks, that kind of thing. Not much of a dock fish because I think the water's too. Here's, here's the deal, here's what makes me think that, and, and just trying to think it out loud, is the, where do the giggers go at night? They go shallow, because that's where the flounders are at. Hell, if they were there during the daylight, the giggers would be there. They're low lives, they'd go anywhere to go anything. If they, if, they were up, if they were up walking around on the beach and saw one, they'd stick them. You know, that's just, uh, you know, it's just the way it is. <laughs>